Welcome to GUI Challenges, where I create interfaces my way, and then I challenge you to do it your way. And with our creative minds combined, we're gonna find multiple ways to solve these interfaces and expand the diversity of our skills. In today's GUI challenge, we are building a tabs component, and I know you've used one of these, but have you built one before? They can kind of be full of lots of features that you might not think of at first, and we're going to go over a lot of those features today, and you're going to notice that we are building upon the side nav and the stories components that we have previously covered in these episodes. I hope you're all caught up, because here goes another great one. Let's check it out. Dun -dun 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 Demo time! Let's head over to the debugging corner and I want to show you some of the features of my tabs component. So tabs come in all sorts of flavors. This one has a lot of obvious style. One of them is I have a scrollable area is sort of like the first class citizen of interaction patterns. Um, that's a very mobile centric thing to do. Like on mobile, it's really normal for you to sort of pan instead of click to get your way. Um, although I wanted to support both. So of course you can also use the keyboard. So if I just click over here into my component, I hit tab. I'm going through the different content sections here. You can see that they're focused and I hit continue to hit shift tab. I'll find my way up into a nav item. And if I hit enter on a nav item and click the link, it automatically scrolls. So this is the browser scrolling to the content that matches the href of that and then setting focus on it so that I can just hit up and down on my arrow keys to scroll the content. And then I can hit left and right to navigate between the different scroll snapped articles that I'm in. I just have a lot of of really bi-directional scrolling power with the keyboard, with touch, and with my mouse with this solution. It also has some light amounts of progressive enhancement and some user preferences that are really nice. So if you have JavaScript disabled, which I've simulated here in Firefox by turning it off in the settings, the links still point to in-page elements and the browser still knows how to scroll to something automatically. That's really nice. Now, the smooth scroll nature of what we see there is not present in Safari. That's a scroll behavior smooth. This is CSS property that they do seek to uh, have in their browser. It'll be out soon, but it just doesn't have it yet. And we'll get to why that is just sort of a nice little upgrade to have for someone because down here where the user prefers reduced motion, look at how we instantly transition here. Even though this browser Opera is capable of smooth scroll, I've disabled it explicitly if the user wants reduced motion. Now I still have animations as I scroll. See how the color highlights in the new item? and then we fade in the underline. We've actually swapped from an indicator that's being transitioned in 3D, its width and its X position, into a border bottom solution. So we transition those all in CSS and we still have scroll linked animations and we still get this nice buttery effect. I feel like this was just a combination of a lot of wins and I wanna cover them really bad with you. So let's check out the HTML. This is sort of where it all starts and let's go there. Now, hopefully what you see here isn't that surprising. We have a device frame, which has been in a lot of the previous demos. It's not part of the snap tab. So let's skip it and jump right into snap tabs as a custom element. This is kind of where it all starts to get fun and interesting. The breakdown of the component hopefully starts to read like a book. We have a header of a navigation. So this header is for the section, right? We have many articles to go through. So here's a header to introduce all the different articles. There's a navigation in this header that represents a bunch of links. And these links each represent a particular article in the content down below. We can expand some of these just to see what they look like inside of here. My, my more element had some SVG. That was just kind of fun as like a mobile little icon and each article is full of a bunch of lorem. And some of them are scrollable and some of them aren't because I wanted that to sort of be a feature of this tabs is sometimes the content that you scroll to is even scrollable itself, right? If we look at this breakdown for, in terms of layout, this header is horizontally scrollable and we've got a utility class here indicating that that we'll go over soon. This section is also horizontally scrollable and each article is vertically scrollable. That's three different scroll zones. And you know what? Grid and flex, they make it kind of a walk in the park. Let's check out those layouts because I think this markup is it's pretty clear and let's build upon it. But first we must preview in Chromium Canary. So over here, I'm scrolling our top nav down here. I can scroll our article content and then I can also pan back and forth inside of our scrollable articles list. Okay, so those are our scrollable zones. We can also preview. I want to show this. If you go to system preferences and go to general and show scroll bars, you can set this to always. And here, if I reload, look at our nice little scroll zones. So we have these permanent scroll bars now. It's almost like if we're on Windows or something and we can see how they all sort of save state too. Look at that. I think one of my favorite things about this preview is, is grabbing this thumbnail down here. It's just so rewarding. 
Um, I love that. Okay, so let me go back to my settings and set these to automatic. That's my preference, but other users have other ones. And I'm gonna bump this size up. I'm gonna zoom it up. I'm gonna open Chrome DevTools with Command Option I, and I'm using Chrome Canary because there are some new experiments in here that I am super excited about. Here's our device. Don't care about that very much. I care about snap tabs, and we can see that there's a flex badge here and a flex and a grid badge. And let's just expand these all so we can see how many different badges we have. Okay, it looks like that. And if that looks like an overwhelming amount of badges and it's hard to follow, that's why we made this layout tab. And you can visit here to see all of the grid overlays and all of the flex overlays. And that's where I'm gonna start because I'm gonna go over our layouts really quick and I'm gonna do it right from here. Our top layout is snap tabs. And if we click it, it sort of toggles that feature on for us. And we can see it highlight over there and I'm gonna change its color to something cooler like pink. Aha, so we can see that we have two boxes, one on top and one below. And that's because we have a flex direction set to column. So that just kind of creates a stack. And that's the same thing for this layout here. Well, here I clicked it, but we can uncheck our layout there. We can go to this header and toggle it on here. And that one's just another one. It has the one indicator element and then a nav with a list of links. Now the nav has some cool overlay styles. So let's go ahead and toggle this one off and toggle this one on. And I'm gonna change its color. Actually, lime green is pretty cool. I can't really see it though. Let's change it to something uh, more visible. Awesome. Okay, so here's our blue. This is our nav overflow. And we can see that this is a scrollable area and it's hashing out the items that aren't currently in view, which is super neat. And if we toggle that one off and toggle on our links, and if I click this button, it'll take me to the node in the DOM, which means I can go to the styles. And I wanna show you this. If you hover over the alignment, like align items or justify items, it will overlay the pressures, like the directions that these are trying to align to. And these tabs are uh, align item center because they want any icons or any other items that are with them in that link to all be vertically centered. So, right, isn't that cool? Well, we had one more layout to go over and that was a grid layout here on this section. So if I toggle that on, I'm gonna also change its color to black. Yes, something rad, okay. And this layout, I click the element, go to styles, should look pretty familiar. Here it is, display grid, grid auto flow column, grid auto columns 100%. We used that on the stories component. So this just says hey, any number of children that are coming in, I'm going in a direction of columns. So they're all coming over here to the right and each column is 100% of my width. And that's what we get this box, box, box. They're all just side by side and no gap. Okay, so that is the high level of our layouts, but let's go look at the styles that, that represent all this stuff and how did I author and what's it look like there? Okay, so if we come over here to tabs.css, I have snap tabs open. We've got some colors, some spacing. Here's our display flex and, fle and flex direction column, our display flex and flex direction column. I feel like if I say that in more of like an announcer voice, maybe I'll uh, enunciate these better. They're kind of tricky. Well, anyway, then we have overflow hidden and position relative. And what these are doing is they're anchoring our element. It needs to have three child scroll views and some things might need position kind of interesting in there. So we give them this sort of containment here with overflow hidden and position relative. And this and matches could also be and is, but I don't think my highlighter likes it. Yeah. This and matches uh, is looking for child elements, header, nav, section, article A. These are all like interactive elements that come from your keyboard that you can interact with. And so I set their outline color to match our you know, hue and accent that's coming from this component and give them an outline offset. If we look at our scroll snap X, so these are our two horizontally scrolling elements. We set their overflow, their overflow behavior, and we set them as a snap element. So it's a snap container. We also say, hey, if the user is okay with motion, they have no motion preferences, let's scroll all of their in-page links smoothly. So we'll uh, enhance that interaction, which is when you click a link and it tries to bring in the element that matches, uh, it will do that smoothly instead of instantly. And down here, we hide the scroll bar thumbs with uh, an older selector and then new in the spec way here, if the user can't hover. So if they can't hover on these horizontal scrolling you know, areas, we're just gonna hide the thumbs entirely. And that was something I like to do on native. Native usually does that, where like the vertical scroll bars are present, but the horizontal ones are missing. Anyway, I thought that was a cool tip. And let's look at the snap tabs header. So if we come back over here, let's get rid of our grid. So we'll come back to our layout panel or turn off the grid and turn on the header because that's what we're looking at right now. Okay, and in here we've got a flex string zero and a min block size of fit content. These are kind of tricky. They're in here because we have some pressures coming from the uh, section here. The section has a style of block size 100% and the header needs to basically defend itself against that pushy sibling. And it does that by saying, I don't shrink. And since I'm also an overflowing X, you know, scrolling container and that's giving me some cross browser issues, I'm gonna go ahead and write my min height, my min block size is fit content. And that makes 
makes that work across browsers. So that's kind of some funky styles that came in here, but they're due to the pressures and the amount of nesting of flex and grid that we're doing in here. It's just a little complex for the browsers. And that helped equalize everything. This header is also a flex uh, container, which has the direction of column. And that's why we see the indicator is underneath the list of like the nav link here or the nav element that has a list of links, right? Okay, so that's why that's a stack. And the nav itself is just a display flex. Look at that, that's all it has. And the reason though, that the elements are pushing out to the right instead of being squished, because normally flex would try to like fit them and not wrap, right? Like we don't have any wrapping styles here, but if we go to either uh, like of these elements and we look at their white space set to no wrap, that's what's causing these to explode out of the parent is these are saying, no, 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 I will never wrap. My width is my width and I have some padding. So you better respect that. And the nav says, well, I'm a flex and they're currently going in this direction of row and there's too many of them. So I'm just bigger than my parent and the parents like, Hey, that's cool. I'm ready to overflow my content. So don't worry about it. So that's how we set that up as we set these elements as being kind of uh, demanding in their width. And then we uh, allow that to be a directionality in the container. And then the container of that container is the one that allows scrolling. So scrolling always has two uh, elements that have to play in here. Something has to be really big. Something has to be bigger than its parent. And then the parent must be ready to be a scrolling window. I go over a lot of this stuff in the article where I kind of talk about these oversized children and this window concept. So go look at that if you are wondering what it is I'm talking about. Anyway, each link has scroll snap line set to start. And that's why as we scroll this top nav, they'll snap right here. And we always get that nice left alignment, which is really important, I think. Okay, and then we have some things about focus and some styles in there. Let's go on to the snap tab section. So we talked about this display already. This is from the stories component. We talked about block size 100%. This is like the dominant section, right? This needed to fill this area. And then each article, each article is snapping as a scroll snap target, right? Here it is snapping. And we set the overflow to Y to auto, and that's why we can vertically scroll these. And we contain that over scroll behavior. I just like anytime something's scrolling and it's scrolling in one direction, contain that. It's just nice. All right, we'll close that back up and look at our custom media queries here for when the user is preferring reduced motion. So let me go to rendering, scroll down to uh, prefers reduced motion. I'll set the motion to prefers reduced, and I'm also gonna go turn off some of my layouts. Let's just go uncheck those. Okay, go back to rendering. So what we've done is we've switched it at runtime to now the user prefers reduced motion. And as I click between sections, look at that. We get to see our transition now of a border bottom uh, crossfading instead of being scrolled uh, live. And that just happens right here in this CSS where we look to see, hey, is the user in a state where they want to, you know, reduced motion? Let's hide the visibility of the snap indicator and instead go put in a border block end, so border bottom, and, you know, use the same dimensions that we used for the snap indicator and transition some of those items. And then in the JavaScript, we're still watching those. We're just going to apply a different transformation based on this preference. So that's it for the styles. And let's go look at some of the JavaScript, but I feel like this video is getting kind of long. So I'm going to kind of go quick. I'll pull open the index.js file from the second column. And first thing I'm doing is I'm importing the scroll timeline polyfill. This lets us use it today. There's CSS and JavaScript. We'll link to this in the show notes. It's a really great spec. I'm excited about it. Then we look from JavaScript to see if motion is okay. We look for the same media query that we do in our CSS but we stash the result of it into a destructured variable called motion okay. So motion okay is representing the matches Boolean here. Then we grab and stash a bunch of elements so that we can uh, use them in all of our functions. We're gonna create a new scroll timeline that's focused on the um, horizontal scroller of the articles, and that will tick the animation of color and the underscore position as we go through in some of these later ones. We go through each of the tab nav items and we create keyframes for them. If motion is okay, we animate the underscore, uh, well, you know, that goes underneath the tabs. And the rest of this is kind of helping us maintain state. We watch scroll to see when scroll ends, because when scroll ends, we're going to determine the currently active tab, like article, and then set that active tab. And that's uh, all that happens there. We're also looking for clicks on the tabs and we're synchronizing things there. And the last thing that we do, which is kind of neat, is window load. We look to see if there's a hash and we find the appropriate tab that matches that article. So here, check it out. I'm over here, I'm at the more section. If I just hit reload, see how the page loaded, looked at more and synchronized that both of these go to that state? That's right here in that window on load. There is so much more to get into, but we have run out of time.
I had a blast building these tabs and I've tried to pack the rest of the deets into the blog post. So if you're hungry for more, don't miss that post on web.dev. And like always, hopefully this is making you really itchy to bring your own tab style to the table. Do us all a favor and share that to me on Twitter or YouTube, cause you never know, maybe I'll give it a shout out. Thanks for tuning in, time to do it your way. See y'all.